Welcome, 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 welcome. Hello, hello. I believe, and I hate to say it, Michael, I hate to startle the fucking audience here, but I believe we're live. I believe we're live. Uh, and like you always say, you're a big proponent of always saying, you know, the interwebs. And, you know. I don't know. I've probably said that once. Uh, but it's kind of your daily catchphrase type deal, dealio. All right, people. I just posted on Instagram that a positive stream is live, so Michael, that means it's officially official. I'm going to stop you right there. That's fucking adorable. All right? And that, you know what I call that? I call that adulting. That's classic adulting. <laughs> hey, here's a question, everybody. Uh, you know really quick. Yes. Really quick, everybody. Do Michael and my voices sound good? I know this is something we should always figure out beforehand, but uh, there's no real way that I've found that's good to test this out. It's, not, it's easy. So is does this do these audio levels sound good? A okay. Is my voice blown out or clipping horribly? Also with me. Yes, for both of us. I don't, I don't want to be a two hundred percent loud. Zach is quiet. Is that true? Y'all are good. Wait, I'm gonna find a way to me, fucking slow mo this chat. There's a million comments a second. Oh, you just did your, uh, you released your schmucks like two days ago, didn't you? I did, yes. Realized. What did you all think of that? What did you guys, oh, I shouldn't have set myself on that one. I was going to say it's bad to hurt my feelings. Uh, I, think it, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, it's okay. No, it's fine. Guys, I am going to say, though, if anybody tries to hurt my feelings, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to dox you. I'm going to fucking harass you. I'm going to start a harassment campaign. I'm going to go ahead and I am going to, I'm going to break the law in about eight different ways if you do hurt my feelings. So just a heads up. I seriously need to find a slow mode. This is going too fast for me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Guys, keep keep up the uh, the, the fucking the Might juicy. Might try to sit out some comments. Yeah, yeah. See if oh, you can, good at see, see if you can find any sort of uh, any, uh, any conspiracy. You know, Jojo like, buys that. Donate. Michael, we I can't hear anything you're saying right now. You're talking. Oh, this is a great way to start. <laughs> Well, off to a good start, everybody, right? Hello. Did I drop out? Yeah, you did, Michael. You went ahead and you, you, you did drop out. Wait a minute, let's see. Oh, dearie. Dearie, me. Wait. I you know ahead. what? I've just got that slow Australian internet, so you never know what's going to happen. You've got one fucking string attached to two cans. That's your internet. It's pretty bad. It's actually bad in Australia. Wait, hold on. Oh, 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 I see. I see. Can I just do it from here? Wait. Wait a moment. <laughs> Wait a moment. Sorry, I'm trying to fucking slow-mo this thing. I should have uh, prepped a bit more. This is my own fault. We've done this in such a Who cares? Part. Fuck the comments. Well, Let's Michael, just draw. Draw, the... draw. Here's the problem. You know what? You're probably right. I, well, you know what? We just haven't done this in such a long time. And I just... Uh, oh, boy. Oh, dearie me. We can just answer all the questions oh, in wait, the wait, next wait, wait. I, think, I think I found it. Oh, slow-mo. There we go. Boom. Boom! Okay, done. There we go. You try to fucking... There we go. That's still, that's still no, not going to make it... Perfect, but it's gonna make it manageable. Mad City donates twenty dollars. Says you're gay. Yeah, we'll try. Well, that's that's just straight up homophobic, brother. Uh, this is a place of love, peace, tranquility, and basically smiles and happiness all around. I know that's trying to be a little bit of a silly joke on your part, but dude, it is. You know, and I'm Michael. Let's say it on three. The, what's the stream called? It's called one, two, three. It's called the very positive the stream. Very positive stream. Yes. Thank you. So it's in the title. Yes. It's yep. pretty obvious. Yep. So you fucking trolls and you haters and you little POSs, you little characters out there that think you can come in here and put me in a fucking bad mood, you're wrong. You know what? You're I not gonna do it. That. No, this. I mean, sorry, I'm getting. I'm, oh. I'm losing. I'm losing my my, my No, beef. you go, go, go. Just get it out. I'm losing my, get it out I'm losing my bananas here. I'll tell you what, but I'll say something else. Uh -huh. And this is not. This is dead serious, folks. This is dead serious. This is called the very positive stream, and I'm not going to say it a second or third time. I suppose that was probably the third time I said it so far, but yeah. I will not say it after this point. All I will right. say uh, our good friend Mishan Lisp. From uh, 
the comments that says Zachariah, have you seen my wallet? I need my wallet, Zachariah. So that's so I did go ahead like so I, okay, so what happened. So I did go ahead. I did steal your wallet. Um, you're not going to get it back. What I might do is I might hold it above your head and sort of say, "Come on, try to grab it, try to grab it, shrimp, try to grab it, try to grab it." Uh, you're probably gonna jump up and down off your feet while I lift it, you know, in coordination with you jumping. Um, so that's probably what's gonna happen with that. I'm just being honest with you, dude. Does that make sense when I say there that? It is. Who is Michael? There it is. There it is. There it is. Hmm. There it is. The drive-by shot at the beginning. Who is Michael? <laughs> You don't know who Michael is? Michael Cusack, go ahead and introduce yourself. I guess it has been a little while. We probably have some new oh, people I here. Don't, oh, I just don't want to. Oh, Michael, when you, when you, when you talk myself. about yourself, I grin ear to fucking ear. So please do it. Just, just wiki me. Just wiki, look at my Wikipedia article. It's on there. It's on the internet somewhere. Look up a crime database and then type in his name. You'll you're my, K, K, uh, <laughs> Kaylee DeMont. You're my inspiration, little goblin man. Oh, is that... It's like you got the Goblin Man thing a lot. Yeah. I appreciate it. You know what I mean? I do freaking A L- little love bit it. hurtful. A little bit. But... It kind of makes me go, makes me wince. I go, ink. You know, I usually go, ink. That's kind of my catchphrase whenever I'm physically or... But don't... I... Can, I jump... Can I jump in on that? Don't think I've ever heard you say that noise ever. No, I did, no, I did that all the time. Ink. Ink. Guys, I... I... You know, it's not, it's not... What is that? That's not E-E-K. Because I've heard you go, ink. Well, the N is the, and, and nobody make a joke, you know, that's an easy place to, to make a joke when I just said there, but, you know, the adding the, the N in there really does kind of make it a bit of extra, like, punch to it. Eek! Because when I say eek, it sounds like oh. I saw a mouse or something, or a rodent, or even a yeah. cockroach, or something of uh, something of that sort, something of that nature. Uh, yeah. But if you say ink, it's like, holy, mo- you, that's when you swivel your head around and you say, what did I just hear? You know what I mean? All right, great. That's definitely that your catchphrase. Uh... Well, dude, you're wrong about that. Somebody said in the chat, so you're just wrong. So, all right then. Like, we're just gonna agree to disagree, I guess. By the way, we'll try to rail through some of these donations, but just be aware that I, I this is even more. This is a lot between the chat and everything else. We're gonna try to get through these. Oh, uh, so... this is a good, this is a good one. This isn't a topic you're interested in. I've heard. Yes. Uh, Tofu donates five dollars, five American dollars, yes. and says Zach. Yes. What cigars do you smoke? Oh. I re- recommend the Deadwood cigars if you want something sweet and mellow. I haven't tried those, uh, but what I would recommend, like me personally, I, I like a lot of different brands. I love, uh, in fact, I haven't had a cigar in a long time. I actually, before a couple of days ago, uh, I had was a, it last time we had a cigar, or was it we did you and I, I? that was the last time, and then maybe I, the last time since then was a couple of days ago. I was like, I haven't had one in a few months. You know, you know, that's something you want to do every day. Nice bad cigarettes or anything. But anyways, I had a couple of days ago with uh, Tomar and my friend Hans. And uh, it was at H. Upman. And I would say to anybody, uh, if you're outside the U.S. where Cuban cigars are legal, I would say this is my opinion. And I'm no expert by any means. And I'm sure there's a cigar guy out there who's going to fucking uh, beat me with a billy club at Comic-Con for saying this. But uh, I, I would say the Cuban cigars of different brands can be like good or bad or whatever. I have found, I think... The Cuban H Upman, uh, the Cuban equivalent is great. I think it's a great cigar. But if you, but that's a great uh, cigar. Uh, I think. I don't know. There's there's various brands I like. I think Monte Cristo is a good one. It's a little bit higher end, but it's a good one if you want to give somebody a cigar that doesn't smoke them often. Like every time I've been with somebody who's like, I've never had a cigar before. What do I do? I'll just buy them a Monte Cristo usually, and they usually love it. Anyways. There it is. There it is. That's it. There it is. A lot of information being spilled it out is. here. It's quite a bit. It's called uh, Unhinge Your Brain. A little cartoon character spell out of it. Let's get. Let's let's draw a motivational speaker because I'm feeling Man, very motivated. Let, today. Do, a, do a motivational speaker, but this is something I don't think you'd be up for. But Mad City does donate twenty dollars and says, "Draw yourself for once, you maniac." Have you? And I'm curious. Have you ever drawn yourself? Yeah, I've drawn myself before, but it's never quite like a legitimate. Uh... It's for the same way you would draw yourself. If somebody said draw yourself, Michael, however, you know, you'd go grotesque or perhaps uh, hyperbolic for comedic effect, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't draw myself that often. No, I think. yeah, I think I, I do kind of raise my eyebrow. This is completely attacking other people, which is always a great idea in an industry that's really small. Uh, I do get a little bit weirded out when I see artists draw themselves constantly. It does make me cock yeah. my eyebrow up uh, like Stephen Colbert, you know what I mean? Like a cool, funny pose I do when I cock my eyebrow up. 
But uh, for real, whenever I see people do that, I, I gotta go, huh. It's a bit odd. <laughs> Draw yourself daily. Got a few names, a few names in my head. I actually don't even have anybody in particular. I just see, whenever I see somebody drawing themselves constantly, I kind of go, eh. But I'm sure I have weird artistic tics that uh, piss off most of the art community. So what are you going to do? Yeah, who, who else do you want to piss off? Let's, see let's if we're just on burn this, every fucking this... bridge, Teddy. This is the first three yeah. back. Let's just come back yeah. swinging. Uh, let's yeah. just <laughs> make, make enemies with the whole a animation industry. I think that's a great idea. No, I like that. Now, this guy is definitely giving a TED Talk. Um, by the way, everybody, I lost my fucking Cinti glove. I don't know where it went. It's completely gone. So my fucking fat, sweaty hand is sliding across the Cinti. And I know this is totally first world problems. Uh, turn up volume pretty please. Is it really low? Who is it low for, me or Michael or both? I'm looking at Hello. the chat. Is anybody? Is anybody? I I'm guess just testing my microphone. Can't hear shit. Yeah, well, I'm waiting. Yes, volume is low for both. It's both, both, neither. Uh, okay, okay. Let's turn both of us up, and we'll get back to drawing this uh, crazy motivational speaker character. Yoink. Sound too loud or too quiet or too loud. Well, I was gonna say it's too loud. If that's it too right. loud, just turn your volume down. I have nothing. I don't. Is unless it's like clipping. If my microphone, if my audio is clipping. Then please, uh, I'll fix it. But if it's not clipping, it's fine. Do I have metal lips? Somebody says. Also, Michael, if you do me a favor, a little favor. Uh, if you see if you see a little donation and it's easy to rattle off and it's quick and it's a quick question. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, yep. Throw I'll, it my I'll way. I'll be on that. Yes, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, uh Mr. Retro Reactive says, uh, can you please draw big orange man? It would soothe my brain growth. I don't know what that is. Is that a reference to something specific? I don't know. I just don't know. Uh, Brian, sorry, Brian the Illuminator, do you miss doing Sleepy Cabin? Listening to you on the podcast has given me many huge laughs over the years and helped me through my depression. XOXO. Oh, that's well, that nice. Well, I appreciate it, man. Uh, I mean, yeah, I miss it. I mean, everyone's kind of doing their own thing now, so it's not. Part of me obviously misses talking to those guys and hanging out with all those guys. You know, specifically Corey and Jeff, they're over in Philly, so. You know, I, I don't, I don't really talk to them that much either. I was just busy, uh, but at the same time, I do. It, it, it was its own little thing. It's like Hellbenders, you know what I mean? It's, it's got its own little chapter in my brain. I, I, I make it a point to try not to. I'm not patting myself on the back for this, but I just make it an effort to try not to do the same thing for too long. Partially because I'll get bored. Partially because people will get bored. But also, you want to. It's a challenge for myself. I want to kind of go. Okay, let's. You know, they say you should try to start with your uh, strongest bit kind of thing so i want to do that i want to try to get all my ideas out if i can think of something better then i can do that but if i can't then i'm a hack and i should be doing this anyways uh anyways yeah also by the way we're definitely going to finish uh sleepy cast i think we're on 20 episode 27 or 28 out of 30 so i really do think we, you could see a situation where the last few episodes literally take six months or a year each which is fine i think it's interesting great there you go there you go. Uh, let's see. Chris Patania. Patania. Five dollars. You should draw the lovely won't flush down couple. I don't know what that is. And Maybe you do. Flush down. Yeah, it's the uh, it's the top. Oh, petty, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I showed you that before. Right. Yeah. There yeah, it yeah. is. There it is. Uh, uh, Yves. Five dollars. Zach, have you tried the American Cohibas? They're yes, goddamn the co terrible. Emo. Uh, I would say they're terrible. You mean the ones that are, I think it's Nicaragua? I'm assuming that's what you mean, like the non-Cuban ones? Uh, Cohiba? They're okay. I will say, by the way, uh, if you're going to get a Cuban cigar, like I said, if you're going to get any brand, I will definitely say the Cohibas I've had that have been Cuban are way up, definitely way above what you can get in America, like the Nicaragua, wherever the fuck they're made, Nicaragua or, uh, or, or uh, whatever the fuck. Anyways, I would definitely recommend it. Um, 
Mad City donates fifteen dollars. Hey fellas, talk Ooh. about your Oscars opinions. I've got no opinions when it comes to the Oscars because I've never seen it. I or the Grammys. Have no or... opinions. I, 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 I don't even have an yeah. energy like ooh, I fuck the. I yeah, I could have, if I were, had to be a comedian too and talk about this stuff, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have anything. I know Lady Gaga was in a picture where I was comparing her to being in a Facebook where she was bullied, oh, and what? she was at the Oscars or something. That's all I know. <laughs> yeah, did you see that? I saw nothing for the Oscars. The only thing I know is the uh, the host was kicked off a few months ago. They had no. They basically had no host, right? For the first time ever. Uh, yeah, I yeah, I couldn't answer you. Kevin Hart was know. supposed to host in that whole. I don't want to get into it, but that whole fucking thing happened when he made the jokes on Twitter and they found it. So I think I, I'm pretty sure they just had no host at that point. Look, I don't watch the Oscars anyways. That's not my. That's not my demographic. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't know. Again, it's not even like an edgy, like, f- I, don't, I don't care either way. I don't love the Oscars. I don't hate the Oscars. Dude, I just don't. What, what is the, it's the point of, because when you're watching an award show, it's it's bad enough even if you work in that industry and you're seeing your friends go up. But why would you watch it? Is it just because it's, you, the, I, I, you, like, I guess the fan, the, fan of the movies and stuff? Yeah, maybe. I, that's the only thing I can think of. I just don't get the interest. Um, I've never cared for those award shows, and again, yeah. I don't say that as a whole. Either that I just don't give a shit. I don't care. If you can, if you can sit down and watch that, God bless. All right. This is the little guy being chased. No, this is me giving you a TED talk. He's walking around barefoot on the TED talk stage. Oh, I thought I thought he's running from whatever that thing is that you're drawing behind him. I, I'm, I've got a delay right now, so... Oh, I was, I'm sure my screen probably Skype. those hands in front of him. I'm sure my screen on Skype. Oh, were you? Yeah. Oh, that's why my internet went bad. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that, no, that's... No, yeah. You're sharing twice. Yeah. Ooh. That's embarrassing. You can probably close oh, out, of, yeah, you probably close out of the YouTube screen completely. Yeah, I'm out of that. I'm out. Brother, I'm out of that shit right now. Oh, no, I have to read the comments. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Sorry, that's right. Ooh, we're rusty. Ooh. Ooh, signs of rust. This Ooh. guy says, Zach, please draw a, a creature doing its banking. Now, I don't know about you. That sounds like it could be a little bit of a, a charged uh, concept. Uh, so, uh, Zach, have you seen the Donald Trump call to the H3 podcast? I think I did see that. It's pretty incredible that they got him. It's crazy. Yeah, stuff. that's pretty crazy that that's, uh, Ethan got the real Donald Trump. He, he got at real Donald Trump. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. I like that. What kind of hat should this fucking piece of shit guy have? This guy should have some sort of uh, thing. Wait, why is that um, affiliated? Jeffrey. Oh wait, this is the is this the artist that does your your schmucks drawings? It's Jeffrey. Oh, Jeff Delgado. What did Delgado. he say? He said, "Hey, I love what I'm seeing." Moi. Oh, you know what, everybody? Now I'm not gonna be one of those guys who teases stuff constantly, but. Uh, I'm working on stuff with that guy that I think you'll very much like, and I'm not gonna say anything. It's not Melvin Dinky, and I'm not gonna. I'm gonna shut my little fucking pie hole. All I'm gonna say is uh, it'll be out when it's out. That's Jeff. That's the best five dollars you've ever spent. Good plug. No, seriously. Everyone go uh, follow him on Twitter at. I think it's Jeff underscore Delgado. I believe. I believe. But uh, talented individual. I'll tell you what. So really T donates nine dollars ninety nine. Don't know why I couldn't have just rounded up to ten. Seems, That's right. Seems a bit passive. Uh, says, yeah. 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 No, were you thinking that too? Yeah, I was thinking of not even reading this, but Okay. Yeah, go ahead, I guess. I'm kinda of pissed, but go ahead. No problem. Hey Zach, love your stuff. I'd like your input on my situation. I'm a nineteen year old working uh, a warehouse job. I was never homeschooled and have no education. How do I get out of this endless loop of hell? XOXO. Wait, read that one more time. I was listening, but I wasn't thinking. I wasn't, like, processing what you were saying. <laughs> okay. Hey, Z- hey, Zach. Love your stuff. Yes. I'd like your input on my situation. Yeah. I'm a 19-year-old working a warehouse job. I was never homeschooled and have no education. How do I get out of this endless loop of hell? Uh, XOXO. When you, when you say you were never homeschooled, I'm assuming that means you never – did you go to public school? Did, sorry, did you say uh, – Well, from what I understand, from what I – he meant to say I was never schooled at all and also not homeschooled. So you, I, I'm guessing you, just no school at all. Look, look in the comments and tell me, did you have any schooling whatsoever? Did, are you saying you, you were only homeschooled? No, he says and have no, and have no education. 
Okay, well, uh, I would... I mean, well, he can answer. Well, I'll keep out for an answer, but you can Well, I would going. say, well, look, man, I'll say this right away. Uh, like, I, I, I'm the last guy. I'm some fucking, like, art. I'm, I'm a YouTube animator. Like, I'm, I'm the last guy. But I appreciate you coming to me, and I would say if I'm going to advise anything, uh, it depends what you want to do. You know, there's no shame in doing, you know, any sort of physical labor, like figuring out that stuff if you want to do that. If, you, if you're pursuing a creative uh, goal, I would say the best thing to do is stand out. You know, that's the only way to do it. Um, but there is a reality that, unfortunately, it's a numbers game if you're an artist. And I don't say that to be discouraging. I say it to hopefully make everybody out there listening work harder, which is, you know, like if you're an artist or an animator, for example... There's thousands or potentially millions, if you're talking about art, of people trying to get their name out there. So just try to stand out. You know, that's the first thing. How are you? How, okay, everybody else is making art. What are you making that you nobody have to, else is You have getting? to stand out in an open uh, crowd. What's that thing? Uh, I can't remember where that's from. But yeah, you have to stand out in an open crowd. And like that could even be controversial. That's like that's why a lot of people go to shock stuff. But I mean, that kind of can shoot you in the foot as well. Yeah, too. for sure. And I think, like, for me, like... You know, I'm not the only guy who draws weird stuff like this, but there's I kind of narrowed the field down by by doing this stuff. It's not that it is pretty of a niche thing, you know. So that was where I, that was where I felt comfortable. Number one, that's what I like to do. That's what I thought was funny, uh, and it's what I thought. It's what I realized that it would make me stand out a little bit more. So and also it's something you develop too, man. Like it's not something anybody figures out. They know exactly what they want to do. I would say just practice, and it's such a generic thing. And it's not satisfying to hear, but just by virtue of you doing it, you're already... It's like going to the gym. If you're just showing up to the gym and you're not doing that much, you're doing something, you're already, just by virtue of showing up, you're already doing better than you would have if you wouldn't go. And the same thing is true for art. Like, you're not, the truth is, you're not going to... And I have no idea, by the way, if he wants to do art even, but assuming you do... Uh, or well, he did say, he did say, confirm, no education at all. Okay, well, I would so. say, number one, what are you interested in? Are you interested in in... You know, world events. If if you're 19 and you've you've had no educational experience, you obviously had to read and stuff. You obviously have some amount of, of understanding. I would say number one, for education purposes, look into stuff online. We have limited age where you can buy books yourself. You can read free articles. You can read free PDFs. You can look up YouTube videos. So, as an education perspective, uh, if that's what you're really interested in doing to help yourself, I would say do that for sure. But from an art thing. Or a creative angle, yeah, stand out a little bit. It's not going to be easy. It's not, you're not going to get any, like, dude, I've been doing this fucking garbage for basically 10 years, essentially. It, it's, it's, uh, it's fucking, it takes a long time. And even then, you're not guaranteed to, to, to do anything successfully. But if you're persistent and you're showing up, you're already putting yourself above everybody else who, who decides to give up or doesn't want to do it. And, you know, those people have valid reasons for feeling discouraged, but... Again, by being persistent, uh, you're already automatically putting yourself in a league that 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 warrants looking at. I think. I hope that was a good answer. Again, I'm, I'm probably not the best guy to go to for this sort of stuff, but I appreciate it. If everybody in the comments has a better answer, fucking throw it at that guy. But this guy's almost done. This fucking motivational speaker. Uh, okay, Mad City says fifteen dollars for Zach to tell Michael he appreciates appreciates him as a good friend. Ugh, that's beautiful. Also, I see alternate history hub up there. That guy's got a great YouTube channel. What did he? What did, what did he say? In the donations. Um, who was that? I just looked at the donations. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I was I was going through that. I was just about that's to. Okay. Get to, that's okay. Uh, no, that's uh, totally fine. Oh, no, that's all right. Uh, Shade Man says. What's the last thing you've seen that's made you cry or almost make you cry? And no, it's not Shad Man. It was, Sh was Shade no, no, Man. No, no, I was saying gonna... there's a guy called Alternate History. Hunter. No, I'm saying if anyone oh, else oh, is going to oh, fucking... Oh. You know, it's funny. Yeah. I think I told the story before, uh, yeah. but there was a guy called on DeviantArt called The Shade Man who took Shad Man's name and then he... Imperson... I told the story in the podcast, but he impersonated me and he would take my art and he would trace it in like... In like uh... MS Paint or something, and he would, like, remove the hair of characters. That was the only difference he made. So he'd, like, take Zach from Hellbenders and just remove the hair. Anyways, he said he was me, and somebody contacted me. He was like, dude, this guy's impersonating you. And apparently this, like, 13-year-old was talking to another 14-year-old, and she was like, you must be the real the real Zach who was going by the Shade Man. But I was like, no, that is not me, and you're breaking the law, dude. And he was like, 
Because he was a person he'd be talking to like a 13 year old. <laughs> and he was like, Did you say you're breaking the law, dude? No, but more or less, I was like, dude, you can't, you can't go around impersonating people. And he was like, I'm sorry. And then they ended up being fine, but it was still a weird fucking situation. Yeah. Uh, okay, so all right, we got that out of the way. Yeah. But there was the um, yes, the alternate history hub yes. one. Yeah. I saw it all. Um, I kind of jump in my feed. I was in digital arts for the first half of college before changing into history. I learned more online than actually college. Practice does make perfect, and well, I completely agree with that. Oh, too. dude, I I have to say, like, I I love history right now. I'm, not, I'm no I'm no historian or expert, but like in in high school specifically, and all throughout school. And I've been faulting specific teachers, but I the way they taught history when I was going to school was basically this happened, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened. And they were like going to, like, why do you need to memorize how many people died in the Vietnam War? That's not relevant. The bigger stuff that was more, like, I didn't know really. And I had a, I had a regular education, but they didn't teach it in a really interesting way. The more interesting idea is like, yeah, the Cold War. The way they pitched the Cold War, by the way, was it was called the Cold War because nobody ever, like, the two countries never fought. Even they, they taught the Cuban Missile Crisis, but it never was... The real story of the Cold War is so fucking compelling and interesting. But I only became interested in it after I graduated by far. Like, it was years after I graduated. So, uh, by the way, I'm looking up uh, what the TED Talk stage looks like. Oh, there it is. So, yeah, I totally agree, man. I, I think I think even Spaz Kid, uh, Corey, he never went to college for animation, and he's one of the best animators I know. We live in an age yeah. right now where... Where you can really get good at something just by uh... the the best animators I know have never gone to college. They're just super obsessive people, and if they want to get something done, they'll do it. So they'll they'll just watch a million YouTube videos, be just addicted to learning that for the next whatever like well, six months. Well, I know, and I don't say this in a, in, you know, throwing shade, but uh, I I've seen people that have gone to college and they're not so great. So it goes both ways. Yeah. It depends on how much you want to learn and how quickly you want to learn. This idea that you just go to college and you'll just get good automatically by having gone there. Uh, and by the way, I'm not, I'm not discouraging anybody to go to college. I'm just saying you have to have that passion in you or else it's it's going to be... College for the arts in general. I mean, it's there's, there, are, there are some arts where uh, going to college really does uh, help a lot when it comes to it. But you can learn so much of that online, especially like filmmaking yeah. and things like that. Just yeah. watch tutorial videos. You can, I've learned so I, I much more on I YouTube than anything else. I don't think that's bad advice for, for creative. Or like if you're going to be a doctor, you're not going to fucking learn that shit online. Yeah. Like, it, it, but if it's it, obviously even, even some cre like drama courses at college would be, obviously it's better to be actually acting with people and doing prac and drama is an art. Watching YouTube videos of drama is not going to help you act as much as actually going to like a course and a unit or it's whatever it's a degree for that. So there's still stuff with arts where it does benefit, but sure. animation, like filmmaking, and music, there's a lot, a lot I of think that even is music practical. to a degree. Oh, music, uh, uh, definitely, dude. Yeah, like like with the animators, the best musicians I know didn't go to college no, for music. They're self-taught because the, here's the problem with a lot of this stuff, and I think it's even true for like school in general. They have to fill out a certain amount of time. So it's like nine months or whatever it is. They have to at least teach you for that amount of time. You're going to get a lot of fluff there. There's so much stuff. Uh, again, if you go to history or art or anything that I was taught that I was like, that was actually, even looking back that I know more about it, like that was actually pointless. You only taught that because you needed to you know, have filler. Yeah. And I want to reiterate Absolutely. again, I'm not, attack, I'm not attacking education as a whole, but specifically with creative mediums, if you're gonna go to if you're gonna go to college for like art or music or something, at least think about it a little bit. I, I that's all I would yeah. say is be yeah. be really. And a lot of us have made that mistake too of going there and drop. I definitely went to a lower level college here in Australia for art and dropped out in two months because it was fucking awful. It was horrific. So every I think a lot of my friends at least too in the oh, animation community well, dude, have gone to college for a bit. A lot of a lot of really small states or small countries or places like that. A lot of them don't have the infrastructure to like te the educational infrastructure to teach you about stuff like I'll give you an example when I was trying to apply for college there was the, there was no animation class at all nothing with animation uh, there was not it was the, the closest thing I could get to to what I wanted to do was graphic design and we're talking about a forty thousand dollar degree or an eighty thousand dollar of whatever it was that I was gonna owe for graphic design which I didn't even want to do it was it was really yeah. not an appealing pitch. 
Go, if you go to college or, or schools like that, I'd go more for the actual social benefits. Like, say, if you know some people that are going to be in the same year and it's going to be fun. Like, it, that's a, a life experience. I that's, the, that's the one thing I do regret about not going to university or college is just having those experiences, which a lot of the time are more valuable than the actual education. I would definitely say if you're not going to go to college, if that's what you do decide to do, at least, at least move in with other guys who are going to college or move out with other guys and just live on your own, or girls, or whatever your situation is. I would definitely say, even if you don't go to college yourself, uh, because you're pursuing a creative uh, you know, medium, and you don't feel it's appropriate. Let's see, well, let's see. Blue, Blue the Blue guy says, I'm in college for writing mainly because I think it's going to be easier to get somewhere with it if I prove I've been through like five, five, four years of stuff. And that's obviously the main, one of the main reasons is getting that piece of paper I, that's going to say... I've said this, and I, think, yeah. and I think that's partially true, but think about it this way. Think about it this way. If you're a movie studio, and by the way, I'm not trying to dissuade anybody again from going, if that's what you want to do, that's a good choice. But for me, my logic was this, and this is true. Uh, if you are a movie company, if you're a studio, I mean, if you're a studio or a director or whatever, or you're a head of a, a, comp- a network, even a TV network, and you have two people that are applying for the same job, and one person went to college and they're giving you four out of ten work, and the other person never had went to college one day in their life for writing or for art or whatever that medium is, but they're amazing – art and creative endeavors like that are so subjective that they're always going to pick the person without a degree. Now, again, if you are creatively driven and you want to do that anyways, if you're going to get good regardless, go to college. But if you're somebody who doesn't... Here's the thing with that, and I'll I'll add to this. There's two there's two aspects to this. Right now, I'm, uh, I'm currently hiring writers for a writer's room. And the way I, I approach is not looking at credit, uh, like the university of anything they've gone to it's usually word of mouth so in this business it's a lot of like oh have you worked with them before how were they it's more it's if anything yeah. it's like their personality contest so it's more were they cool were they cool to work with and you're never going to look at them and say oh well do they have a university That's degree do they have a college degree it's all going to be a lot of the time even me and my producer we're looking at twitter people on twitter that are funny for being writers so there's another aspect to this where it's like the argument you would probably say blue the blue guy is well how am I going to get that first job if I don't have the the um you know the the college kind of credentials which is, which is totally fair which is fine but you're just going to work out there's a million doors to get into this industry Zach and I have gone through the animators route oh, it's like nice. we can we it's could get easy. writers gigs on other stuff because we've just we started in the animators route but you, you could do any like get on twitter and just become like a like tweet a million times a day or make your own videos if you make and comedy, then you can say yeah a I lot of people them become, and you can use that as being a writer a lot of people have become well known just from tweeting funny stuff like that's how people people have made careers and again i'm not advocating that for everybody it's a really hard thing to do i think we're just saying to wrap this conversation up like at least think about it if you're going to go into college for a job we put it like this a degree. If you're a doctor, you need a fucking degree. If you're in a couple, if you're in a lot of fields, if you're an engineer, you need a degree. A, a degree is not going to guarantee you a job if if you're not putting in the effort. Let me just put it that way. So, as long as you're passionate and putting in the effort, I'd say do what you want to do. Do what feels right. Um, but yeah. Right. And I'll end on that. If if the one I'd think of as an exception is drama, if you're interested in being an actor, yeah, probably go to college for that. Okay. Anyway, Mad City. Uh, do you boys like? Or are interested in Mob Psycho 100 whatsoever? I don't know what that is. Uh, I know what that is, but I, I I have not seen it yet. Not out of like protest, I just haven't seen it. Sweet. Let's see a little Ted drawing. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> oh, I like that. What's the little symbol he's got on his shirt? It's the Earth. It's Mother Nature. He's a very peace loving man, which is what I love to see in this life. A little symbol I should. Oops. It was a anarchist symbol. No, no, this guy's the opposite. This guy loves. He's, he's kind of going. He's kind of running across here. He's he's pacing back and forth with his muddy feet. Um, I think people that are earthly like that are usually anarchists, though. I suppose you're right. They kind of want to rip out, rip the government down. Like that guy who charged. Terrence McKenna. You ever see that guy who charged Ronald Reagan? He goes, Mr. Reagan, Mr. Reagan, and like the balloon pops, and, like Reagan. Isn't that uh, post? Well, uh, post his. Yeah, it was like 1993. Like, yeah. 
Mr. Reagan, Mr. Reagan, Mr. Reagan. Why the fuck would you do that? Was it actually? It wasn't an assassination attempt. No, was he it? just. But he did get really fucking close to him. Why would you do that to the one president that was nearly assassinated in public too, like that? <laughs> actually, there's probably other presidents nearly assassinated, like that. Like Shrimpo Jones. Shrimpo Jones. Shrimpo Jones, President Shrimpo Jones. Oh yeah, Shrimpo Jones. Let's yeah. Let's draw that course. next, actually. Yeah. Twiddle dee, twiddle do. Uh, can you draw a cool crab? Says Jake Macos. See, I could do that, but it is so. It is so. Here's the crazy part. So it is outlawed. So it is gonna go ahead and be outlawed. Mhm. Mm uh, Joseph Stenick says, "Have you guys tried acid before? Has it influenced your careers?" Uh, I haven't. I tried it once. Well, I, I've told the story a bunch of times, so I'm not gonna go into it. But I, I did something like acid, and. Yeah. Uh, that uh, I, 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 the the result is that, um, whenever I for like three to four years after, and it's still partially is there. Uh, whenever I look at like patterns, like a carpet, or like a painting, like really close, like patterns, it wiggles. It stopped. It's gotten less bad over the years, but it permanently fucking damaged my brain. Yeah, I'm not well, saying don't I, do it. Reason... I'm just saying uh, the, that that is what happened. It was a fine experience besides the fucking uh, permanent brain damage. I'm sure acid's great. I've just got I've got a fear of uh, any psychedelic just because my brain. I I've got that weird fear of breaking my brain, and I know that being at 12 hours, just if you've got a bad trip in the first minute, and, and another like 12 hours to go, that's such a scary thought to me. No, that's why I haven't. Uh, that's why I've never done. I'll never do mushrooms. I'm so scared it's gonna fucking trigger some hor uh, horrible yeah, paranoid yeah. I'm already, schizophrenia. Even weed is enough. Yeah, same. I'm the same. Like weed is enough of a psychedelic experience, which sends me to yeah. hell sometimes. So. Fuck that. And uh, like DMT too? Fuck all of that shit. For me at least. Yeah, I would my do DMT. DMT scares brain. the shit out of me. Yeah. So let's drop I like I but personally I, I love like watching Terrence McKenna videos where they where he talks about psychedelics like acid and DMT because to me it's really it's like inspiring thinking about it, but I could never do it. Um Alright. Now let's draw Shrimpo Jones and then we'll cause I realize it's already fucking five forty and we have to Michael have to get some work done. So we're not we're not gonna end it. We'll probably go a little bit after 5 o'clock, or 6 o'clock, I mean, so tw we'll probably go for like 30 more minutes, but let's, I'll try to burn through the Shrimpo, President Shrimpo Jones. Colin Creation says, Michael, are you still looking for writers? I'm currently at uni for creative writing history. Would you, would love to help you in any way I can. Really love working on animation as well. Just email me if you can. I've got to, what's, um, that, what's that email, email uh, Oh, I've got to find it. It's michaelcusackatkillsbury.com if you can use that right now. <laughs> Uh, just go to my Twitter or something and find... Uh, I'm actually pretty hard to contact when it comes to business stuff. I should make that better. Yeah, just contact me. I just have it right in my Twitter bio. It's a good idea. Probably a good idea. Don't you get spammies, though? Yeah, but then you just don't respond to it or, or whatever. And also, the, 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 the good part is nobody's... You're not going to get a million emails per day. I, like, even... If I get a lot, I'll get like five a day or something. It's mo it's most most of the shit I get is is from people just reaching out or they're like, "Hello, I am from India and I am here to talk That's to you. Your right. channel is growing." It's like, okay, yeah, fuck off. <laughs> That's all they want to tell you for they're just contacting from India to say your channel is growing. No, they no say, business. Well, they go, yeah, they, yeah, they tell me like, "Oh, we want to work." It's like your channel is growing. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello. Goodbye. This is not. I'm looking at a reference picture. Did. If you guys can't tell, uh, I'm not in the right state of my here. Okay, so this is... It's the window. This, uh, I guess we're going to go to this, back to this college thing for a second. Jeff says, I'm currently going to college and I am uh, a year away, year and a half away from getting my bachelor's in history and my minor in secondary education. I feel just as lost as when I uh, left high school. Any advice? Well, we pretty much covered all of it. What was that? What would you I mean, oh, don't drop out? I mean, wait, 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 wait. Sorry, what was the question? Yeah. How long has he been in college for? So he's a year and a half away from getting his bachelor's. Oh, in don't history. fuck it. Don't, his, don't drop out. Yeah, it's history. It, dude, that you, you're gonna, uh, you're not gonna regret no, no, no. that. This is why getting... I was trying to be really apprehensive. I, I don't want to yeah, encourage yeah. anybody to drop out. If you are going to college for a creative, a creative pursuit, something very subjective like music. Or art, or animation, or even writing to a degree. Writing, writing is a little more nebulous because that's like there's a lot more science to writing, where it's like you have to follow, you know, the three act structure and all that's all that stuff. 
So even righty, I don't you think can, you could still you could still Google that. You could. I'm that. just saying, like that was arguable, but the rest of it. But if you're going for like history or something, that's something you probably want to you want to you want to look at. Yeah, don't. Yeah, that's an actual real profession. Yeah, yeah. I really would encourage anybody to drop out. Education's stress. a good thing. I get it's a fucking mess right now, and the whole system is 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 in shambles. Uh, but I I would say. You but yeah, but if you want to be a history teacher in the future, it'd be great to have a uh, you know bachelor in arts history. Yeah, you know. for sure. Whatever. We don't know. I don't know anything about that. Shit. I shouldn't talk about it. Um, yeah, I mean, no, no, no. Right. I would say don't drop out for because of what I said. Don't do that. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> Ian Moffat says, uh, any news on hubbub about bumping shoulders with uh, showbiz people or any projects in the worst? No spoilers. Uh, T face. Michael, what Zach, do you, 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 you tackle that one. Any news on how about bumping shows with show? But we, Zach and I currently right now are working on a pilot for for TV. Uh, we're in the middle of pretty much production. We've just started doing storyboards yep, and animatic doing kind this, of stuff. This so. level of art form, it's very. Uh... We, we wish we could talk about it more and show more about it, but it's, it's just it's better to do it when it's actually getting close to the end of it, and you know then you'd have to wait ages. So. Yeah, we're yeah, doing that also, right now. And also, like a million things can happen uh, where it's like, ooh, that, 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 that's going to get canned or something, but just you never fucking know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, other than that, I'm working on a uh, a project over here in Australia for it's it's um, it's like more of a family show, I guess, along the lines of a Bob's Burgers or a Simpsons. Uh, I can talk about that. It's that's Koala Man. I'm yeah. developing that right now. That's early years, early days. Zach, what are you? Anything you're doing? Uh, so I'm doing this project with you, a pilot with you. I think we've said that network before. We're doing it for Adult Swim. So those, I think we've said that out loud before. That's not a big deal. Uh, but and then on top of that, I have a couple other projects, like miscellaneous things I'd like to do this year. I have work in something with Jeff Delgado, which he kind of just pitched a couple days ago to me, which I thought was a great idea. Uh, that's something we're going to kind of slowly burn through. I'd really like to just fucking eat a bunch of drugs and then... Uh, like Ritalin or something. I mean, seriously, like not for real, but just sit down and focus. Can pump my body full of focus with drugs, and uh, just like knock out that Melvin Dickey book, because I I have it in my head. I just it's it's like I'm doing all this other shit right now, uh, so it's just gonna take like a weekend or something to really knock that out thumbnail wise, and I'll give it to to Jeff Delgado. We can knock that out, but yeah, that and I think I think those are the biggest things. This this pilot specifically, I really want to make sure we get. Uh, knocked out. Yeah, someone's recommending cocaine for that, by the way. Maybe I'm not going to do cocaine. Okay. Uh, what's your... Okay. Shade Man, $9.99. Uh, what are your thoughts on the theory that humans gain their level of intelligence through uh, neurogenesis, whatever, caused by psychedelic mushrooms? You're talking about the stoned ape theory, right? By the Terrence McKenna stuff. Personally, I think... I was talking about this yesterday, yeah, you, actually. You, you, I think what it was... This, yeah. I think what it was is it aided. There's a very good chance that it aided in our evolution uh, speed up. I think it was a lot of other things, environment, uh, uh, environmental reasons, and just right timing. But I do think it was. I do actually genuinely believe it was an aspect, because if you got if you got apes having like <laughs> squeegeeing their fourth eye, yeah, that that feels like it must lead to something. Uh, so yeah, why not? Fuck it. I, 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 I mean, I don't know. I don't know enough. I just know the basics of 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 like you know our diets changing and stuff like that. I don't. I don't even. I'm not even gonna talk. I don't even know about that. Well, no, it's not apes. I know there's someone. To, yeah, it's like whatever. Yeah. By the way, that dude, this is this is a new documentary. What a bit of. What do you think of this picture, Michael? Look at my screen. Oh, I didn't even see any of this. <laughs> Holy shit. Shrimbo Jones, The Final Days, a Netflix original. Let me take a piss. You talk to the... Jesus Christ. Sure. All right. Uh, Ample says, so what advice would you give to someone trying to get into voice acting? I'm currently reading a book about it and sucking up knowledge, knowledge like an immaculated mole. Sorry, I can't read. Uh, getting into voice acting is – see, I was saying this before with Zach and I. We're lucky enough that we got into a lot of different fields from doing animation. So just just recently, uh, Zach's been approached by like people at Disney for possibly doing voice reel stuff. And that is because he got animations to be successful on YouTube. So there's a lot of different ways you can get into it. 
Uh, that's another thing where I, I don't know about college for that. But, uh, I'd say, like, um, just try to make your own stuff. What are, the, what are this little, voice, what are this little podcast? And voice act in it. Try to make your own stuff and voice act in it, and then you can possibly get uh, famous off that. So this person is saying, uh, what advice would you give to someone trying to get into voice acting? I'm currently reading a book about it and sucking up knowledge like an evacuated Okay, I, I talked – hey, I'm not kidding about this. Uh, I talked a little bit about it in my Mason, newest episode sorry. of the podcast, uh, which schmucks with Phil – and Nick Wolfhard, Nick Wolfhard is, uh, that's, he's a voice actor, that's his job. I w- I've always said it, like, give people, give the, the voice director or whoever what they want, but always experiment a little bit. Give them what they want, and I think go above. I, I you know, uh, and I think you would agree with this, Michael, like, uh, Well, I'm uh, sorry, I, I'm, I think I took it the wrong way. I think, I, th- I thought he meant, or she meant... How do I get into the industry oh, more see. so than how to do it? Maybe you're right, though. Maybe, yeah. Well, I okay, could be wrong. Also, like, well, yeah. let's start taking uh, uh, sort of quick suggestions from the audience, and then we'll do we'll do the pitch a TV show, and then we'll wrap it up. Yeah, sure. Theory but function. here's the problem with voice <laughs> acting. What? Uh, alter the history hub. That guy, by the way, that guy's channel, his whole channel is like doing alter the history stuff. So he does this for real, and he just said, uh, Theory, what if Shrimpo Jones wasn't assassinated? That'd make a good video, my friend, a 20-minute breakdown oh, okay. Alternate history. Shrimpo Jones wins three terms. He repeals the. I, I just, I just want to yeah, say sorry, one sorry, last thing ahead, about the ahead. voice acting. There's a million people trying to do it. The problem with that is it's so fucking saturated. There's a billion people yeah. out there that send me, "Can I do voices in your cartoons?" Well, obviously, uh, I'm not gonna look at that shit. So, and no one will. And no studio is interested if they see some voice actor send that shit. I would say, I'm, I'm not that knowledgeable in this, but I will say what really helps when looking at voice acting uh, talent if it comes from somewhere. Like if you got friends recommending you or whatever, have a really fucking good voice acting reel. And that if it's a YouTube hey, can video, I, can, can I can I give you advice? You can this? just make it up. So uh, obviously, wait a second. Obviously, it's not um, going to be stuff that you've acted in because you haven't acted in anything. Make it up. So make up characters and just do voices and put music behind it. So if you're doing like a pirate or something, like have pir- like have a really good presentation. That's the best way that it works for us. Like people hiring. I, Sorry, and you this, go ahead. this is. And this is just me. Uh, and look at other voice demos and do some of what they're doing, but don't do. I, I swear to God, I've seen the same voice demo. It's like, hey, what are you doing around here, partner? Uh, hey, sir. Like, don't 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 do like a cowboy and a nerd. Like, d- do some interesting voices, but don't like look at other voice demos and tr- like learn what yeah. people are doing a lot and try to make stand out, man. That's the biggest thing. Also, about go on this. Newgrounds and find yeah. small YouTubers that are making small cartoons and just say, "I can do." Don't go to big guys first. Go to small people so you can get your real made up. Go to small uh, animators and say, "Hey, I can do any voice yeah. you want. I'll do it for free. Do everything for free." Yeah. It's the same with acting. You've got to work for free for ten years, unfortunately. Oh, wait, here's, so. here's, here's Seth. Seth Anderson. We'll answer this and we'll take some. By the way, guys, start suggesting stuff from the chat. Uh, but Seth Anderson donates twenty bucks. Thank you, man. And he says. Any advice for a twenty-year-old who's pitching a show with someone to a studio that's showing more than a lot of interest in us? I'm terrified, really. Okay, I'll, I'll run through really quick, and Michael, you can give your advice. My advice is simply this: you are not pitching your show. I'll say it again: you are not pitching your show. You are pitching yourself. A network wants to know that they can work with you. You're going to be reliable. You're going to get, there's an ebb and a flow. You're going to work with them. Uh, you know, so if they ask for concessions for small things like a title change or a character redesign. Don't pout and take that as a, a room for creative, uh, constructive criticism and go, you know what, if I can't take their idea and make a better version of my own show, take it as a challenge. Don't take it as them putting you down. Now, obviously, you're going to have uh, you're gonna have your red lines. You're going to have your spots where you're like, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. That's Have those, but pick your battles. But the biggest thing is, number one, I think if you're pitching to a studio or a network, walk in with your big idea that you love that's really fleshed out. But also, very importantly, walk in with a couple other ideas. The biggest, I've never been, and Michael, you can back me up on this too. I've never been to a pitch for something where we've actually talked about the concept that I'm pitching for more than five minutes or ten minutes. The re- so Usually these things are 20, 30 minutes, and only like ha- less than half of the time is actually spent usually pitching that stuff. It's usually a meeting to talk with you, meet with you, figure out what kind of person you are, how easy are you to collaborate with. So I'll say it again to wrap it up. You are pitching yourself. That's my best advice. Yeah, I agree with everything. Yeah, we've already talked about that a lot. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, yeah that's everything there, I agree. With. Yeah. Okay, now we'll just take some um, stuff from the chat. 
What do I think? Uh, India, thank- Pakistan, shit, mm. <laughs> India Jet. Michael and I were on a Skype call yesterday watching that live. Like- while, while it happened. So, yeah. so I think we were just talking about, <laughs> we are talking about the conflict yeah. and like, oh, what if it kicked off? And then a minute later, it actually happened. So it was very bizarre. I, I've, I've been, I'm not going to talk about this for too long because what the fuck do I know? I'm some animator, but that's something I've been following, I've been looking at for a long time. Like that's something. If if we if we ever see nuclear weapons used in our lifetime, it's gonna be that region, like that, or I think number two in order would be that, in, or like you know Israel slash Iran or Saudi Arabia slash Iran. But India, Pakistan, everybody, I encourage everybody to go look up uh, 1999, uh, the brief conflict they had. It got really serious. It got very very close to nuclear war in 1999 between those two countries. So it's a very serious uh, fucking nutty issue. Anyways, let's look at the suggestions. Uh, Ian Moffat, ten dollars. Only can grasp my vision. Can you do Biggie Smalls as a Kingdom Hearts character? Dude, you were asking a guy. I appreciate the donation, but you were talking to a man that has never played Kingdom Hearts. I never grew up on it. I never played any of it. I, I don't know anything about it. Draw Joe Rogan, or right, I'll draw like a quick. Uh, Common Creations. Hey, Michael, I'll shoot you an email. Would love to help or get your advice. Yeah, sweet. Just send me a fucking email. Bald? Is he like bald? Bald? Joe Rogan? Is he just like he's he's fully bald? No, I know he shaves his head, but is it like is it like Larry David or is it? I think it does have. I think it does have a bit of shade. It for sure does. I I think you can see his like. Yeah, I. I think it's got a lot of shine from what I remember. He's usually got his headphones on, so it's hard to see. You're right. Did you want to show any of the uh, interview from today? It was like some Alex Jones. Yeah, I've seen I saw Alex Jones <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty funny. He said, "What did he say?" Was, oh, I can't remember. He was talking about the. Uh, he was talking about the the the, the abortion thing. He screamed. Yeah. I know the fucking first person to ever make that joke, but uh, there you go. There's Joe Rogan. Great. Uh, a friendly wiener says, Zach, could you please draw a funny little man holding a bass guitar that I could get as a tattoo? Yes, I could do that. And somebody also said, draw a brand new family character. That's a great idea. Uh, actually, let's draw a family guy character. Brand, new, br- wait, brand new family guy character sounds like its own TV show. Executive produced by Seth MacFarlane. Well, brand new family guy character. The show. Hey, what's up? Hey. Hey, my name is Pete. Yeah, I've got a new TV dad. You remember Peter? Well, yeah, Pete. Yeah. Get over it. You've met Peter. You've met Homer J. Simpson. Now meet Pete. Wait, is that Peter from Family? No. No. This is new. My wife's name is Marsha. Uh, I know everyone goes and thinks about... Uh, yeah, that show, but it's not that it's a new character. Seth MacFarlane is just executive producing this. Is he voicing any of the characters? I think he voices the talking neighbor character. Sure. And this is in the Family uh, Guy universe. It's like a yeah, the it's same a spin, street. It's or... a spinoff. This yeah. is like this is like this is this comes out in twenty twenty three when like Seth is like you know he's that almost yeah. has no involvement in this. Do you think it's like a Matt Groening thing where he went to Netflix yeah. as a chairman? Or yeah, does, no, does Fox it, pick this up? Yeah, uh, no, I think this is Netflix and it's or Hulu. I think it's Hulu. I think it's Hulu. And I believe I think that it's sort of like a little bit more dramatic. It's like he's kind of like BoJack Horseman or like, you know, it's a little bit more. Yeah. Like right? being on another network, it's either Seth wanted to do it this way and Fox didn't want to do it or the other network has made it like oh we will we did Bojack so we want to do it more like a, yeah like it's a, a episodic arc yeah yeah no, there's cool character works like with Pete, Pete. Yeah. yeah the show is called Pete's Journey I can imagine Twitter trailers for that and he's walking with a leather jacket but it's it's animated a little bit better than Family Guy like, there's a and there's like sad music like something you'd see in Rick and Morty yeah, 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 that's yeah. fucking cool. All right, so that's a cool new character. Now I need to give him legs, obviously. 
So, I'm Pete. Here's my story. I'm Pete. You're going to see me on Hulu. I love enchiladas. That's what I'm all about. I love Mexican food in general. Is that all right? I don't know. I've got a Mexican wife. I did vote for Jeb Bush in the primaries. Is that a fucking problem? I'm not kidding. Answer me. I didn't think the guac ball stuff was funny, personally. So there's that. I don't know. I see myself as a funny guy, so whatever. I have a really good sense of humor, and that didn't make me laugh. That just didn't make me laugh. You know, that was just offensive. The please so... clap stuff was overblown. It was. It was actually actually played it off very well. I don't. I don't know. I don't know, dude. I don't know. Genuinely think he's charismatic, so I don't know. No, I do. I do. No, no, wait, wait. Stop. Stop. Let me talk for one second. I am from Florida. I am from Florida. I. I. Dude, he was gov. I met the guy at a fundraiser. He was governor of Florida. He cut taxes. All right. I'm not fucking around. This isn't a bit, dude. That's why the show is dark. He just go. It's it, he goes. Really, yeah. He goes into it. And but because it's Seth MacFarlane, everyone's like, uh, would they get angry knowing he's a Democrat? And it's like there's a lot of Republican talk in this. Yeah, I think Seth Does is like a big press yeah. to say, you know, it's really interesting. We we really want, you know, I'm a Democrat myself, but it was a really interesting experiment to to th see through the eyes of <laughs> mm. of, of Pete. This changes his perception on politics. This changes everything. Is what is what the trailer keeps saying. They say this changes everything. Mm. That's actually what the trailer is at first. Just this change this, on black. Uh, yeah, yeah. The white text on black. This is everything. All right, all right. Let's see. take a few more suggestions, and then again, we'll do the TV show pitch. Exactly. It's exactly six o'clock too. Um, some foreigner name says, "Can you draw a fourth dimensional Michael harassing some foreigners?" Uh, that's that's like seventeen things. I would do that if it wasn't so complicated. Let's try to do like one character just so I can burn through them really quick. And like probably not caricatures either. Like that Joe Rogan is not anything. A big pinky guy. Okay, that's easy. Whoops, no, do you like? Ian Moffat, I would like to see a strange creature admiring his use of deodorant. Pete looks like a fresh man. I I, I don't I didn't actually think he looks that fresh. I thought he looked a bit, looks a bit grotesque. Yeah. yeah. Now, obviously, I'm not going to draw your hands, but, uh... All right. Oops. Melvin Dinky. How is that? I don't know anything about that project. Is that with Jeff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're uh, we have uh, I I haven't completely like boarded out what the what the concept is. It's a little bit different. I, I I originally it started off as a joke that I was making on uh, Sleepy Cast years ago, but I actually like wrote out an idea, so it's a little bit different than that. It would be an actual kids book, like that would be the goal of it. Uh, but it would be kind of you know grotesque, almost like a Shel Silverstein kind of thing, where it's like four kids, but it's kind of weird. It's I think kids like that shit, man. I really do. And the idea would be to hopefully make it, like, weird enough. You know, the kids, hopefully, if it was at a bookshelf, you'd like at a bookstore, you'd, see, you'd be like, what is this? And you'd grab it. Why is it so quiet? Uh, it shouldn't be. What is my microphone? Wait, hold on. <laughs> okay, there's, there's your pinky man. Um, let's let's stop let's stop this myth right now that Pinky Man doesn't know what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing. <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> See, that's what that's what Washington D.C. does, Washington, folks. That's what Washington does. <laughs> the fifteen-second rehearsed speech. The drive-by at the beginning. The that's 30, the truth. The Thirty that's seconds. The truth. <laughs> Uh, do you want me to do any more questions, or are you just doing drive-by yeah. drawings right now? Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe, uh, yeah, do, do, do donations or slash questions. I was just going to say, uh, Chris Britannia, Chris Britannia says, Hey, Zach, you and Chris talked about an experience where a network told you they were going to make a few Leo and Satan cartoons, but you rejected them because they were awful. Are those anywhere? 
Uh, I was not involved in that, but you'd have to ask that to Chris. I have no idea. That was literally probably seven or eight years ago. Uh, Dude, you are living in the past, brother. Well, you were living in the past. Uh, Kimo Nemo. All right, that's a bit insensitive, but we'll do it. Now, actually, it's, oh, not, it's actually not insensitive because despite what you think, this guy is not on chemotherapy. That's just a very unfortunate name of his. But he does have a huge fucking tongue. He likes to sit beneath his favorite tree. <laughs> Watch the sunset. That is adorable. This thing needs to be hugged right the fuck now. Alright. Okay, there you go. There you go. Alright, we'll try to fill this page up a little bit. I'll make this peak character a little bigger so we... There we go, okay. We chose to go to the mornings to can't do the other things, not because they're easy, but because they are hard. But, okay. Alright, people. There it is. There it is. There it is. Uh, draw a little three-inch movie creature. <laughs> okay, I'll draw. It's fine. Three day, mama. Three day, mama. I feel like you've done that before, have you? Well, I don't know, but now he. <laughs> Imagine if they found a mummy in a sarcophagus and it kept like opening one eye, like smiling. It was just like, look, look at me. It was like, so it's like that, right? Just opens one yeah. eye. No, it'd be, it'd be more like like this, and it'd be like and the second they look away, he'd like open his eye. <laughs> he's like basically faking. Being, it... He's faking being asleep, really. Faking, faking being a mummy. So he's been yeah. in there for two thousand years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a big prank. <laughs> that is the dumbest fucking thing. Okay. It's not even that fun. <laughs> He's just faking being a mummy. I like I like that. But we should do that in that show in Egypt. <laughs> so let's kind take of Egypt. Place. This guy be fake. It's not even yeah. a mummy. It's just a little thing faking being a mummy for attention. He's like smiling hustily. All right. Okay, we'll do okay, two more. Yeah. We'll do like something like right there and something right there. I mean something little yeah, up there. You know, aesthetically, it's gonna yeah, yeah, yeah. be a nice closure. It'll, it'll be filled out. Uh, a mentally, a mentaling screaming snowman. I don't know what so a, I don't know what a mentally is. Product. You said M E N T L I and G. I don't know what that is. Uh, a men mentally, he's, he's rejected. Okay, you know what? You know what? Gonna, let's try, okay, you know what? Let, I'm gonna draw mentaling. Actually, I don't know why you deleted it. The mentaling is. <laughs> what just as mentaling as a character that exists in a world? Yeah. Hello, Mister Mentaling. Hello. Oh, Mister Mentaling. Oh, Mister Mentaling. Oh, Mister. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Mentaling, this is my story. This is my story. I hope you watch it. Don't step on me. Don't squash me. I'm a little Mentaling. Oh, please. I know I'm very small. I know I'm very small. Oh, my God. I'm a Mentaling. Right, this is... Hello. Oi. My name is Jonathan D. Mentaling. I've been trapped inside this cube. Get me out of this cube, of mood. Someone gets me out of oh, this cube. Oh, rats, I'm trapped inside this cube, of mood. Look, here we go. Oh, hello. Trapped in the cube, huh? You thought you could trap me forever? Alright. This is Mr. Bentley. Jonathan R. Mentally trapped within the cube. I meant to say, you meant to say melting, so this is a happy accident. Happy little accident. Happy little accident it was. <laughs> you thought you could banish me, huh? Yes, yes. Alright, there you go. Um, composite this a little bit better. Uh, let's see, some things you can draw. Man with a pickaxe crying due to personal loss. Chinese Jesus. Uh, Black Doctor. Actually, I'm just going to draw one thing uh, up here. Yeah, we'll do one. We'll actually, we'll do two little things. We'll do that thing up there, that thing up there. Then we'll make a show, and then we'll call that a fucking day. Fuck yes. A talking tree? Okay. 
But you think we're going to draw hell bridges, don't you? They're not going to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw... Oh, well, he's public like that. There you go, there's... There's one. <laughs> <laughs> there's, I think, grows out of the ground. That's the tree right there. Are you happy? All right, let's draw over a little thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, t tumor onion. Um, a cute bird making ramen. A time cube. Goblin, please. Irate gamer. Yeah, I've uh, drawn it before, but I'll draw it again. I should have drawn it a long time. I might not be able to do it. <laughs> All right, there you go. Okay. All right, now, drum roll, please. Okay. Now, we do uh, the part, Michael, where you and I think of a new show. This is a new show right. being pitched to every network on this damn earth. Well, do, do you know what? In my mind, I was thinking, because we were talking about that show before with a uh, new Family Guy character. I was thinking, like, streaming, like a Hulu or a Netflix, it's like a arc episodic thing so yes something where i we usually do that anyway i don't even think we lean to i know sorry it's, it's serialized is what they call that isn't it serialization yeah serialized yeah yeah i was saying i think i said episodic i don't know if that's the same but uh yeah let's aim for netflix and it's going to be the next big thing um maybe you guys it was jason 100 percent I, Jason, I was just gonna say blue Jason or or a color Jason, like blue, ja Jason. blue Jason's red medallion. Uh, yeah, yeah. Blue Jason's red medallion. How do you win the medallion? That's well. Hey, stay tuned and find out. Yeah. Is this is this like he's won this medallion and he's in this city and it's big and everyone's like, how'd you win it, Jason? How how'd you win that medallion? Jason, how'd you? So, he... That's his mom. That's like basically, uh, you know, Aunt May. Yeah. The yeah, May of this world. Or it could be him trying to get the red medallion. Uh, Blue Jason's red medallion. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think for sure there's like an Aunt May type. Like, you know, so what does Jason look like, first of all? What is Blue what, what if... Uh, uh, well, I was going to say... Um, Something like what you've drawn with that other blue character with the <laughs> blue blue character? sprays of stuff. But uh, oh, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Like some kind of naked uh, critter of some sort. But what, I was gonna say maybe there is. Could we do it? Like it is Blue Jason's life, and it can be about something else. And there is no Red Medallion, so everyone's waiting for Red Medallion to be mentioned. So I think. He's got this very sick, anguished appearance on his face. Unfortunately, I think he's in discomfort a lot. Yeah, and that's the that's the that's the worst part. Yeah, he's well, he's he's got a lot of ailments. Yeah, he's got crow's feet, and that's new too. He didn't have crow's feet uh, a year or two ago. No, I feel like every day he says "fucking crow's feet," "fucking crow's yeah, feet," he says, "fuck," and he thinks "ah crow's feet." <laughs> Uh, yeah. His catchphrase is is, is, is he has a, he's got like twelve catchphrases. You know, Bart has like "Eat my shorts" and "Don't have a cow." So he's he's got a. Well, he's trying to coin the catchphrases. So yeah. he, I, I think everyone is, everyone goes, "Ha ha, yeah," and he says, "Oh, this is my new catchphrase," and they joke around. They're being sarcastic. They're like, "I thought, oh, I thought wait, the get out of my way was your catchphrase last week." You're like, oh, you're not doing a bit. Yeah, I thought, and the, the, they're like, "Dude, what what happened to, uh, don't have a cow?" And he's like, "Oh no, I've, that's my other one. That's my other catchphrase." This guy's a piece of shit, one hundred percent. I think, um, I think he wears that suit, but he's got no place to go to that needs that suit. I no. think he like washes dishes at a restaurant, yeah. but he still wears yeah. that suit yeah. when he washes the dishes. So his boss at the Italian restaurant says, "Jason, you not only for uh, health and safety reasons, but you really don't need to be wearing that suit while washing it's, dishes it's actually here." Actually, bizarre. You're confusing a lot of the staff. They think you're management. Yeah, you. You can they, they they get a little bit on edge because they don't know if you're from you know, higher <laughs> management or who you are, but you're just washing dishes. <laughs> I just really like to. I just really like to wear my suit. I just really like to wear my suit. 
Yeah, that's a great. This is so Blue Jason. So the, I, I actually pictured the first episode starts with that him in the kitchen. He's washing dishes. So one of the chefs says, "Oh, hey, uh, hey, how can I help you? What's up?" He here? says, "Oh no, I'm I'm the dishwasher. I'm the dishwasher." He says, "Oh, yeah." I didn't know. And then one of the other chefs says, "Yeah, sorry, I don't." Yeah, I saw it, dude. He's actually. Uh, he, uh, it's confusing. Yeah. Uh, hey, but he, hey, no, Jason, he's, Jason, he's, Jason, can we talk to you for a second? Um, we've had a lot of complaints. You're really, you're really startling a lot of the uh, other staff, the the chefs, the, you know, the the janitorial uh, people. Yeah. The, a lot. Of, yeah. you, you're, you're dressed in a uh, way. Look, uh, the the suit. Well, obviously, we're mentioning the suit right now. Uh, at first, you know, we like you know, we loved it. We thought it was quirky. We we loved how uh, enthusiastic you were about the job, but. Uh, after a few weeks, it has posed some problems when it comes to confusion. They say dress for the job please. you want, and we love that. And Jason, Jason, look at me, Jason. We really appreciate that. You're obviously very enthusiastic, and we love that about you. But um, it, it, it's caused so much dis- it's caused so much disruption in the in, behind the scenes here. Obviously, we would have we would uh, we had no idea how much chaos is going to cause. No, we wouldn't have hired you if if we knew, but. Yeah. It's actually amazing how much confusion it's caused. It's a, it, this has reached higher management. There's been emails yeah. uh, asking. And you know what, Jason? You know, I hired you as a favor because I know your father, and I'm not going to fire you for that reason. But if you don't get out of the suit, um, we're going to have to start looking for other, other you know. Uh, I just really don't want to I don't want to I feel like he spits a lot. He drools. Is he a good? I think also he, the, the worst part about this is he is actually really good at washing dishes. He's fucking he's amazing. No, he's the best person at washing dishes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the that's the biggest conflict. So maybe is the whole show just him washing? Is that is that the world? Is him in a restaurant, an Italian restaurant? That's a simple world. Don't forget we're serialized. So what happens? Now I think um, here's where it gets scary. No. Now, now, so what happens here, and I really hate... Two? No, so this is where it gets bad. And Michael, you've got to promise me you're not going to get too freaked out by this. This guy does mm-hmm. come out of the wall, and he does sort of harass and, like, bully Jason, and says nasty things. You're never going to be a dishwasher. You're never going to get You're never gonna get your dream job. Does he say you're never going to get your red medallion? You're never going to get your red medallion. You're never going to get your red medallion. And maybe Blue, Blue Jason didn't even know about his red medallion, so this is a whole what? He goes, what? Hey, Who are you? Get back here! Yeah, that's cool. He goes, hey, and he runs through back yeah, the back into the wall. You... So it's, does he does he come through to the wall at his job at <laughs> yeah. the restaurant? Yeah. Is this at the job? Or... So he, a, what, he says like, you're never going to be a dishwasher? End, this is the, you know, you know the call to action in the movies and the old, in, this, in the star circle? Yeah. This is his call to action. This is what really changes the, he's he was a regular dishwasher. Sure, but... but, but uh, well, but my my question is, you, yeah. you said you had a little bit of dialogue there where you said you're never going to be a dishwasher. So is this before he becomes the dishwasher or after? <laughs> no, he's a dishwasher. No, he's a dishwasher when that's. Stuck. Oh, okay. So does he mainly say you're never going to be more than a dishwasher, and you'll never get your red medallion? No, he says you're never going to be a dishwasher, and you're never going to get your red medallion, which confuses. But he, but he is a dishwasher. But he is a no, dishwasher. That's why Jason's so pissed off. Oh, the more the so sort of the confusion because he is a dishwasher. Yes. I see. Yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah, he's and the red, so... the red medallion thing is also like a side thing, like a red flag. Like, what, yeah, yeah, what does he's, that he's mean? Gonna, he's gonna go, huh? Yeah, huh? And Jason's catchphrase, huh? <laughs> so one of the remember one of the catchphrases <laughs> he does have thirty plus. Yeah, that, that's at least uh, catchphrase. But I guess he that, that's his first catchphrase. That's like huh? in Pokemon how you get yeah. badges. Yeah, yeah, like, this yeah. Is, he gets a catchphrase every episode, so this every is his first one ever. Catchphrase, yeah, yeah. You yeah, never... this is his first one. So wow, yeah, huh? It's the first. And as a, so, mar- yeah. as a marketing thing, we do this. And that is a marketing thing. Now, question. Yeah. Is, is Jason actually... <laughs> okay. Um, is, it's, but it's not political at all? No, no. That blue tie, red tie, we didn't even talk about that. It's just... it That just happens okay, good, good, to be, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we didn't even touch that. Right. Also, yeah. just another thing on that. Is, is blue Jason... Yeah. Uh, Actually blue. I was gonna say red. That's confused me. That yeah, he's that yeah, he's actually yellow, which is the part of all. Oh gosh. Yeah. And what about the creature, the catalyst creature? Uh, let's just say like the um the the unknown catalyst. So he's is a, he so he's a POC. 
And so that's yeah. just a heads up for you. That's good. That's going to be good for Netflix and it's Hulu. Vague. We don't know what he is. He could be any, you know, he's sort of like a uh, beige, a nice beige color. Yeah. It's probably too dark, actually. You know, so, something like that's a good yeah, meme. No, it's, it's kind of like that, that nice middle ground where it pleases everybody. Exactly. This makes everyone happy. So this and, you know. Whoops. So this is great. So this is definitely a show. He's just he's just washing a dish. Does this, does this happen right in front? Like the sink this could is, be right in front of him. There yeah, he's watching. Huh? No one else sees this, by the way. Definitely no one. He's, he goes, huh? I guess, and then he tries to look <laughs> one of the steps. And when he turns around, this guy's sunk back into the wall. He's yeah, he's gone back to hell. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, no, it's hmm. not a good look, but he does have a yellow tie. Also, it's kind of annoying. It's like why sure. What do you mean? What's this, what is this character's name that comes out of the wall? Jason. Blim. Jason. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's not Blue Jason. Yeah. No, the, no, the both the names are Jason. Yeah, but it's not Blue Jason because because uh, Yellow Blue Yellow Jason is called Blue Jason. Wait, what do you mean? His name is Blue Jason. I'm guessing he, Blue Blue <laughs> Jason is his name. The the dishwasher. Yeah, no, his name is Blue Jason. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying they've got different names, <laughs> yeah. technically, because his name is probably Blue. His first name is Blue. His last name is Jason. And the guy that comes out of the wall is his first name's Jason. Yeah, no, the guy who comes out of the wall his name is Jason, but I don't think it's no. His name is not Blue. Yeah, his name is not Blue Jason. He's just regular, like a Jason. He's like Jason Markowitz or something. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So now people, now do you see people why Michael and I are working in the biz? This is the kind of ideas. That it's going to bring this 21st century into, you know, this is really what it's going to make it revolutionary. This is, I, I, can I say this? This is, quote, the next Rick and Morty. Does yeah. that make sense? I would call this Rick and Morty plus Family Guy plus The Simpsons plus South Park plus Project Horseman. All the above. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, Michael, I don't know about you, but I think we should uh, uh, end the stream and then go uh, blacklist ourselves. I think we just did. I think I think Blue no, Jason's red medallion. By the way, there's not even a medallion in this, I don't think. There's right? something about this. I, I just have a feeling this is like what kills it for us. That was a gut feel. As I was drawing it, it was a gut, deep gut feeling. I said, this is it. This is it. Oh, my God. Yeah, that, this that's is it. like what I think this is how, how JFK would have felt when he stepped into that car in Dallas. So it was he like knew, a shiver up his spine. He knew something was wrong. Yeah, he knew something was wrong. And I'll say, do you know what Steve Jobs said? He said, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Or he said, oh, God. He said, oh, wow, oh, <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah, tell, tell the chat about this because I don't, I don't think people, not many people know Steve about that. Steve Jobs' last words as he was dying were, oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow. So I think when I, when I looked at this, I felt that. Does that make sense? I felt. What do you think? Because I, I think about that sometimes. What do you think he was – was he watching, like, the, a light or was it just, like, hell? <laughs> I don't think he was going to hell. He probably maybe, saw, maybe he saw Jason. He could, he could have seen he saw, like, Jason he saw, coming out of the I'll wall. tell you what. He saw blue Jason's red. He saw the brown guy coming out of the wall. The brown Jason yeah. coming out of the wall. Jason. Saying, Jason. He, you don't need to. You can just say Jason because yeah, his yeah. name is blue Jason. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We know Jason yeah, Jason. Means, I think Jason came at him like a like a VR. He came at him and said, you're never going to be. You suck. It was a like really good VR. Yeah. Like yeah. Three, it, oh, my. Whoa. That's that's terrifying. You know, you know, you know, when like Back to the Future 2 with the Jaws uh, shot comes out and tries to bite Marty McFly out of the thing. It's like a three. Yeah, shot. yeah I was thinking exactly that. But I was thinking, yeah. you're, ne you're not going to go to heaven. Yeah. You're not going yeah, to heaven. Yeah. But it's Jason saying, you're not going to go to heaven. Get out of here. He spits on him. <laughs> Oh, oh wow, oh wow. Oh wow, yeah, oh wow, oh wow. That's Jason. Anyway, anyway, guys, I think that's... The, Thank the you, everybody, for donating. Sorry if we didn't get to every donation. I know for a fact we didn't. Uh, I tried, We tried to get through them all. Uh, this was a quicker stream than I thought. Like, in other words, a lot of people are here. You know. Um, oh, yeah, cartoon Enjoy. song, cartoon song. How dare I? What were we thinking? Ooh, lucky. Yeah, so thank you for somebody for pointing that out. Let me... Fucking pull this up. Elon Musk song? Where is it? ABC hip hop song. 6.3 million views. These people who make these fucking things for kids must make a hundred grand a month. I know. I anyway, anyways. The anime is so simple. We should do that. All right. Let's do that. You want to make a we want to make a fucking billion dollars by doing that? Just breaking the yeah. system. Okay, everybody, we'll play this song. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming. Yeah.
I'm an idiot, people. Prince. I'm sorry. Here's what I have to do. I have to mute Michael. That's what I have to do. Yoink. Sorry, people. It's been a while. It's been a slow day. All right? All right. Now. The song you fucking fools have all been waiting for. Adios. Okay, thank you all. Thank you all for being so positive. Uh, we'll thank see you, you next everybody. time.